In our first reading, Elijah is on the mountain and God says he's going to come by and he comes. Uh, it, at first, there's, there's a strong wind that rends the mountain and the rocks and then there's an earthquake and then there's fire and God is not in any, any of those three fantastic things. And then there's a whispering sound and, and, then, and then God is in the wind whispering to tell us, tell us that he, he's primarily or especially in the silence. He wants us to know that so that we're not running after uh, loud music or parties or uh, being on the telephone all the time or watching TV all day or on the computer too much or doing things too much and expecting God's going to be there for you and run your life in that way. He's going to be primarily in the silence and the solitude and the quiet times when we make an effort to, to be with him instead of all the uh, distractions and all the self-seeking and all the um, fanfare that we, we like, uh, that's instant gratification. Not to say that God is not found in our work or when we're recreating and we like to listen to music sometimes or uh, have certain entertainments, God can be there too. Um, certainly if we're very busy, we have many children to take care of or have a lot of work to do or even as priests, uh, you know, think of the different, uh, St. Anthony who just the other day he had to preach a lot you know, he's preaching all day long. Let's think of St. Anthony of Claret who was preaching like, they said he had to preach like three sermons a day throughout his life if you count up all the thousands of talks he gave. But then at the end, then he devotes him, his free time to prayer and silence and solitude. Our Lord is, wants to, us to know the message of to uh, value silence so that we can set, us, um, set aside time for him. Um, in our gospel, our Lord is saying, uh, don't, lust, don't lust after a woman or a man uh, or in your heart, and if you do, you commit adultery, grave sin, by indulging in lust in that way. Don't commit, don't uh, divorce and remarriage or, or remarry or you've committed adultery. As far as lust goes, of course, lust is a problem in every age. It's a, a result of original sin. It's a temptation we always have to battle against. But today, today it's almost certainly worse because of the accessibility of pornography. Pornography is uh, Matt Frad, uh, one of the Catholic apologists, Catholic speakers, lay speakers mentioned, I remember. Um, there's the three A's when it comes to pornography, accessibility, affordability, and anonymity. So it's very accessible, easily accessible. It's very affordable. In fact, it's free in many cases, and it's the anonymity, yeah, you can do it uh, alone in your private and nobody would know, know about it uh, largely. So to conquer this problem, we have to address those issues, those three things, especially accessibility. We have to make it less and less accessible to ourselves or to other people that we are concerned about, of course, children. And make the accessibility as uh, mm, uh, least possible as possible. Um, and in the anonymity, some people who are caught up in the addiction of it have to um, uh, use other people to keep them accountable. You know, tell other, tell other people, you tell other people you got this problem and help me to, uh, you know, like go to groups or uh, let somebody know who's going to keep track of them and, you know, put checks on themselves, um, this kind of thing. Uh, out of sight, out of mind, so if we don't have, so we avoid places where there's a lot of immodesty, um, TV programs or computers or whatever, 
um, out of sight, out of mind, follow the, following those principles, to reject the bad thoughts uh, as, as soon as they come into our mind, turn to uh, prayer and the sacraments, confession often, uh, the Eucharist to strengthen us, the bread of angels, Our Lady devotion to Mary, all the traditional means of overcoming uh, impurity, lust. Um, there's this uh, movement of uh, the theology of the body promoted by um, Christopher West, I guess I could say, um, which ha has its, uh, has its uh, downsides. Uh, a new way of overcoming lust is, presents a new way, a newfangled way of overcoming lust. You don't have to follow the traditional means of overcoming it. Uh, follow this new means of accepting, uh, accepting the, the body the way it is, and you know, be able to look at immodesty and uh, re and see the beauty of the body and this kind of thing. Um, no, I don't think so. You're not going to get around the traditional means of prayer and the sacraments and avoiding occasions of sin and uh, casting thoughts out of your mind, turning to your guardian angel. You can't get around the traditional means of overcoming overcoming lust and impurity. Uh, you try it other ways and you're just not going to see that it works. Um, so we, uh, we use these means and use them uh, and don't poo-poo them or don't... Uh, um, say always have been, you know, this is old things, these have been tried. If we use them diligently, prayerfully, intently, we will overcome this problem with God's help. Always with God's help, as Scripture says, you cannot overcome lust without the help of God. We always have to turn to God for help in all those traditional means. And as it comes to divorce, our Lord himself is saying, Jesus is saying, you cannot divorce and remarry without committing adultery. Uh, these are the words of Jesus. And this, the divorce does not exist when there's a true and valid marriage. Jesus teaches, the church teaches. Divorce is not possible when there's a true marriage. Um, so that being said, let us value marriage. Let us value the indissolubility of marriage. Let us value charity in marriage and, and uh, fostering love in marriage, fostering the positive things in marriage so that marriages can stay together and blossom and be fruitful and be um, a, a means of happiness for the couple. <laughs>